For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. Also, I've got a new merchandise store, hats, hoodies and new tee designs all available right now on the link in the description. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 11 of the Everton Career Mode series here on FIFA 17. In the last episode, we picked up a good win in the final game after turning it around against Southampton. We struggled, but were able to snatch a point away from the jaws of defeat against Manchester United as well. So we're in some okay form. Things have been pretty difficult recently. We've been struggling with this... Uh, well, just the sheer number of fixes we've been playing. What I'm planning on doing today is actually playing Watford and Arsenal and then having a squad report so you guys can see the situation of the team just before we head into the January transfer window. So uh, it gives me the time to record tomorrow's video, which will be Liverpool Leicester Hull, and get your guys feedback for the transfer window upcoming in today's episode so I can head straight into the episode after tomorrow's and continue recording without worrying about having to wait to get opinions etc for uh, transfer suggestions. We can do it kind of just in advance and then you guys will I'll know exactly what you guys think should happen to the squad as we head into the window. We do have Liverpool in the uh, semi-finals of the Football League Cup as well which will be very interesting indeed. We have that game on the horizon that'll be the first game of tomorrow's video but we'll play Watford and Arsenal today and then we'll have a squad report like I say so you guys can tell me what you think I should do with the upcoming transfer window. As things stand I don't really have much of a budget at all. And I don't think, unless it gives me the option to later with an email or something, I can't find any sort of way to ask the board for money. So, as such, we would have to sell to buy. But, anyway, let's push on into the Watford and Arsenal games. We'll play those and then we'll address the transfer window in full after those two games. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further videos, whether it's this series, the Journey series, or the My Player series, which returns, of course, tonight. But without any further ado, Watford away. Good lineup. Akaka and Troy Deeney start up top. They're playing a 5 3 2, so very defensive. But Cabaselli is a very strong defender, and Zuniga on the left hand side is a very quick uh, wing back. So I would presume he's actually going to push a little bit further forward. So maybe uh, their wing backs will push on, and it'll be more like a 3 5 2 going forward, and maybe a 5 3 2 at the back. I'm playing my full strength starting lineup in this one. Yannick Balassi starts on the left hand side with Lukaku and Delafeu. Bitzel, Barkley, and McCarthy in the middle, and then the, the defence is. As you would normally expect it to be, Rico, Baines, Jagielka, Williams and Seamus Coleman. Let's get three points from this one, shall we, and build on the win against Southampton at the end of the last episode. Decore gets around the outside, blocked by Ashley Williams, but in it comes again and headed wide by the man in the middle. Is that going to be a corner? I think it was slightly deflected off Seamus Coleman. It was. Corner to come in from Valeron Berami. It's looped. Keeper should have that and does do so very well. Balassi. Nice ball through to Delefeu on the counter-attack from Watford's corner a moment ago. Delefeu will look for the far corner. Oh, he squeezed in. I don't know whether that took a deflection off uh, Kapue there, but Delefeu very pleased with that goal, celebrating with Lukaku and Yannick Balassi. I was actually aiming to get it across goal there, but it seems as if it went near post. I'm kind of glad that it did in the end because the ball's gone in the back of the net, so... I'm not sure, did it take a deflection? Yeah, it did. It just hit the defender on the shins. I don't know whether you could quite see it there. Watch the flight of the ball. You can see it changes. I think the keeper was expecting it to go across goal, and I was expecting to put it across goal, and it's deflected into that near post. A slight bit of luck, but I will take it. 1-0 Everton. Barkley into McCarthy. I'm hoping, now that we have this 1-0 lead, it will actually tempt them out of their defensive shell. If they switch to more of a 3-5-2 than a 5-3-2, we might be able to find some extra spaces in behind. James McCarthy, ah, I'm going to be lucky to stay on the pitch for that. He turned, I was expecting him to take a touch there, and he turned and passed it first time. Axel Witzel shows great strength there to brush off the attacker, and Lukaku tried to turn it around the corner to James McCarthy, but I couldn't do it. It's getting pretty physical this game now. But hopefully we'll be able to deal with the physicality of it and get ourselves a second goal just to... Oh, ref, is that a foul? No, no foul given. It really is getting a little bit physical. James McCarthy goes in with another challenge. Their man not happy about that. Barkley will give this to McCarthy. McCarthy actually looked for Witzel. That's a terrible pass. That was supposed to be a pass to feet and he kicked it straight at the defender. I think James McCarthy is going to be picking up a yellow card here. And he does exactly that. Unsurprising. That was a rather rash challenge from me. Well, lovely ball over the top. 
JJ's in behind here. That was a great ball. Thankfully, Seamus Coleman comes all the way across from right back to ensure that they don't have a goal-scoring opportunity there. I don't know why it was Seamus Coleman that was in that position, but Barkley will get this out wide to Delefeu. Now, I like to utilise Delefeu's pace, but with Zuniga here, it kind of nullifies my threat on that right-hand side because Zuniga's just as quick. Although, he is now out of position, but I can't find him because the pass from Barkley was poor. Etienne Capu into Valon Berami. Heavy touch. Looks for the ball over the top. Going to need to win this Ashley Williams. Did do. But Decoy brings it down and takes it in his stride well. Could find... Oh, Leighton Baines says a vital interception. But somehow Troy Deeney manages to outmuscle him. And that's 1-1. Baines took the touch and then seemed to run off. I want to see a replay of that. They've pegged us back. See, it goes through here. Leighton Baines gets a touch on it. And then it's almost as if he goes to take a touch with the outside of his left foot and just then runs off to the left without the ball. Right, watch Leighton Baines' left foot here. He looks to try and scoop the ball away, but just misses it. Like, looks to scoop the ball away and turn away from Troy Deeney so he can get the ball clear as he goes in with his left foot here, but just doesn't take the ball and just runs off. Forgets the ball all complete, uh, completely, and Troy Deeney puts it in the back of the net. I don't know whether that's a mistake from me or a mistake from uh, Baines trying to turn with the ball and just not getting it. I don't know, but whoever's mistake it was, it's caused Watford to drag themselves back level. Try and get ourselves a goal to go back in front. McCarthy, go to Lukaku through this gap. And we will have to try and build slowly here, he says, as he tries to force a pass through a gap. Axelvitz will look for Yannick Velassi and will look for the runner, Ross Barkley, and he cannot score. Arla with a good save. I don't know why he took it with his left there. I want him to take it with his right and try and slot it on the floor. Instead, it kind of popped up out the air with his left foot. But never mind. Put a bit of power on this. In it comes. Axel Witzel could win the header. He did. And it hits the top of the bar and goes over. Very close to going back in front on the stroke of half time, But just a few inches from that dipping underneath the bar and making it 2-1. Seamus Coleman's outside. McCarthy's made the run again. I'm going to try and get the turn in and get it quickly. Looking for Delefeu. And I'll look for Balassi on the far side who could drill it across the goal mouth. JJ gets a good block on it. All right, corner to come in. Let's aim towards the near post dish and try and give it to Lukaku, who's there waiting. Can he... Oh, tried to just flick it backwards. Unfortunately, got too much on it. Needed just a deft touch. He kind of put too... Just got too much on it. Hit too much of his head and it goes over the top of the bar. Decent attempt, though. Positive start at the beginning of the second half. Balassi into Lukaku. We go actually to Coleman first, try and draw Zuniga out of position so we can get it to Delefeu, which is kind of what's happened. Zuniga wasn't really out of position there, but we have managed to get to Delefeu. Lukaku will help this on its way. I could try a shot from distance here with James McCarthy with a bit of space on the edge of the box, but Arla makes another good save. Corner to come in again. We're aiming about the penalty spot. In it comes. Who's going to win this? It was actually the Watford defender. Pull it back to Ross Barkley. Help it on its way there to James McCarthy, but I can't get past Etienne Capu. Watford defending very well here. They've brought an Odiani Gallo, but Balassi wins that back. Turn his side to Ross Barkley. Lay that in there to James McCarthy. Look for Lukaku. Maybe go for the 1-2. That's Axel Witzel. Witzel will shoot wide. Oh, it's a corner. Okay, never mind. It took a deflection. Right then, let's put it near post again. And Witzel's up again, as is Lukaku. That'll be another corner. Sustained spell of pressure here. I'm just going to put it to about the penalty spot this time, and we'll see who can get on it. Witzel's up again, but well over the top of the bar this time. This is good football. I'll go out wide to Delefeu. Lukaku's made a good run. But can he find the space? He's got the space. Oh, keeper committed. Lukaku tried to find the corner, but I just didn't get the angle right. So many chances in this second half, but we haven't yet been able to take one. Oh, lovely tackle by Axel Witzel. That was ridiculous. How was he able to keep possession there and hook that away? That was a marvellous tackle. And Ross Barkley's making a great run. And he's in the box here, Ross. And if I can pull this back, Lukaku surely will give us a 2-1 lead. What a move. All started from that phenomenal tackle from Axel Witzel. I don't quite know how he was able to execute it like that, but I'm sure glad he did. Everton 2, Watford 1. Witzel to McCarthy into Barkley oh, could try and slot Lukaku through maybe return it to Ross Barkley to hit first time a little bit wild, worth a shot though worth a try from the edge of the box but uh, not good enough unfortunately if that had flown tops that would have been one hell of a strike but you can see too high, too wide there goes the final whistle it's a 2-1 win at Vicarage Road for us, I'm delighted with that 
It was hard fought. Watford were a very tough test, but as we shake the manager's hand and applaud the away fans that travelled, Axel Witzel very pleased with that result, as you could see. He didn't actually pick up an injury throughout the game, but he was able to carry on, so hopefully he won't be out for too long. Chances weighted in our favour. We weren't necessarily very clinical with them. Three shots on target out of nine total, but... A win is a win, as they say. Chelsea getting a slim margin of victory over West Brom. Arsenal, who are at the top of the table, are yet to play Stoke. So I'm not sure what I leave. Right, it's not a complete rotation side starting against Arsenal. McCarthy, Jagielka Williams and Sergio Rico all maintain their starting positions. So my core defensive three of the CDM and the two centre-backs remain the same. So we should be able to deal with Arsenal's offensive threats, hopefully. And uh, we've got Morales, Jovetic and Williams up top. Should be good enough to score a couple of goals. I'm pretty confident that we can get a result here. At least a draw. A win would be fantastic. But we'll hop in now and see what we can do. Right, Arsenal's lineup is Czech, Debussy, Koscielny, Mustafi, Gibbs. Strong back line. Surprised to see Gibbs in there over Nacho Monreal though. Alexis, Coquelin, Elneny, Oxley, Chamberlain, Santi Cazorla, Danny Welbeck. Okay, so they've got the pace of Wells up top rather than the strength of Giroud. Santi's in there though. No Mesa Ertzel. Oh no, he moved, didn't he? Mesa Ertzel got sold. I remember that now from the transfer windows. They don't have Ertzel. That's good. Just kind of gay. There is some space over here for Morales. And Debussy isn't the quickest, so we might be able to shrug him off. We've done well. I'm actually going to go for a. Oh, I got a little nudge as I was taking that shot. And Morales just completely scooped and spooned his shot wide, sadly. Never mind. First game in the next episode, as we saw there, will be Liverpool in our first Merseyside derby of our career. We face two more next month against uh, Liverpool again in the Football League Cup. So we've waited ages to get one Merseyside derby and then three come along at once. Nice tackle by Drisikan again. That was a chop and a half. It should be a yellow card for Elneny there. But Luka not Lukaku. Jovetic could get played through here. Oh, run straight into Mustafi, but somehow he's still got the ball. Oh, and he's hit the bar. Oh, I'd, I got completely caught myself out there because I thought I'd lost the ball. But somehow Jovetic still had it. That pass was not meant for James Ward-Prowse. Oh, closest either side have come to a goal so far. Jovetic smacking that off the woodwork. Oh, brilliant tackle from Drisikan again. That is exactly the same as what... Axel Witzel did in the previous game, but unfortunately James Ward-Prowse has given that straight to Macho Debussy. Nice little one-two between Santi and uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Oviedo's going to have to catch him up here, slow him down, which we've done well. There are a number of blue shirts back now, but Oxlade-Chamberlain doesn't need to use any of the other red and white ones, it seems. Skipping past people perfectly happily on his own. Debussy, good tackle, but it's only gone back to Macho Debussy. Of all the people on the pitch to score, it's Macho Debussy that puts it into the back of the net. We are 1-0 down. He's sprinting all the way over to celebrate with Arsene Wenger. Oi, oi, oi. 1-0, Arsenal. Match to Debussy. Gibbs with a throw. Straight to Inyaki Williams. Well, that was foolish. Cross comes in. There's a man at the back post. Koscielny chests it down. He's dropped free. Jovetic shoots wide. How? How have I not scored there? Was there someone I could have pulled it back to? I'm not sure. Oh, rip. That could have been 1-1. I don't know how it bobbled free, but it did. And somehow I've managed to skew that wide of the target. I just rushed it. Maybe if I'd have taken my time, taken a touch and tried to just get it. I just tried to turn and shoot rather than trying to pick a spot. If I'd have picked a spot, maybe that would have been an even simpler chance than we thought it was going to be in the first place. Drissa Garnagay wins that back well, though. But I can't get it out of my feet. Nice tackle by James McCarthy. Get it quickly to Inyaki Williams. Dance inside. Doing really well here, Inyaki Williams. Looks for Jovetic as a great ball. And we'll just play it back to Inyaki Williams. And surely this is the equaliser. No, check with a great save. Don't take that out, Morales. Pulls it back. James Ward Prowls. Bend it in the top corner. Check again with a top, top class save. Son of a bitch, Petter. Why have you got to be so good? James Ward Prowls with a corner. Jovetic is up. Inyaki Williams is up. Did he go in? I thought it had gone in. It hit the board behind the goal and trickled along the back of the goal. The netting, and I thought it had snuck into that. I thought it had snuck into the corner, but wasn't to be. Getting closer to an equaliser, though. Half an hour to get it. Aaron Ramsey. Nice return pass. Ramsey. Where's God, the passing game? How? How am I supposed to keep up with that? That's ridiculous passing from Arsenal. Stop it, lads. Alexis drives inside. I was waiting for the extra. Oh, that's no need. There's no need. They've got men over here. Santi. Good block by Oviedo. Sergio Rico's decided to come for it. 
He was very committed there at least. Oh, but I've lost the ball with Muratlas. And Chamberlain makes the turn. And Sergio Rico with the save. And he still ended up in the back of the bloody net. Santi Cazorla makes it 2-0. Oh, and he's going to celebrate with Arsene Wenger as well. They love their manager, the Arsenal players. I'm not in love with the Arsenal players right now. The football they were playing there was ridiculous. I thought I'd been able to get it away, but Morales lost the ball. And then we make a good save and a rebound goal. Morales, it's just really poor for me. And a good save, but it drops, of course, straight to Santi, who buries it. 2-0. There goes the final whistle. It's a 2-0 win for Arsenal. I'm really disappointed with that. The game hinged on those two world-class saves from Petr Cech. If we'd equalised then, we may have been able to push on to get ourselves a second goal and win the game. As it happens, it was Arsenal that got their second before we were even able to register our first. And we end up with a 2-0 defeat. Unsurprisingly, they had a lot of possession. You saw how good their possession was in that first... Uh, in that second goal, actually, in the build-up to it, but... That's cost us at the top of the table. We will be considerably behind Arsenal now. We'll go and have a look at a squad report and run through what we think will be the options for the transfer window. I'm so deflated after that defeat. Right, let's have a look at the squad and we can decide what we think we need to do in the upcoming window. I'm actually going to sort by position here and we'll see what we need to do. Bear in mind, the budget is very small right now, as you saw earlier on. But if there's anything you think I need to do, then we will try and do something in this window. I could maybe throw everything into... Uh, the wage budget and go for a pre-contract. I could look for pre-contract players. As of yet, though, I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Sergio Rico's positioning is actually up four so far this year. That's fantastic. I've not been training him, so it's great to see his positioning up four. Stakelenburg's kicking is down five, but goalkeeper-wise, I think we're going to sell Stakelenburg at the end of the season, not now, at the end of the season, and call up a youngster, unless, unless I find a youngster in January that we can call up and then I'll st sell at Stakelenburg to raise funds for this January transfer window. This Russell Griffiths guy isn't going to be good enough to replace Stakelenburg as a backup goalkeeper though. Seamus Coleman is homesick. Why? I don't know. Ireland is right there but Seamus Coleman is apparently homesick despite being at the club since 2009. It's taken him seven years to decide that he's homesick apparently. So I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I hope we can keep hold of him. Mason Holgate growing very, very well. Very well indeed. Up 5 to 70. He's going to be my backup right back. Continuing into the future. If Coleman does go, then we'll buy a first team right back. But at present, I'm hoping to be able to keep hold of him. John Joe Kenny's improving well. So is Tyus Browning. Browning is kind of playing as a rotation centre back for me currently. But I do have someone in the youth squad that I'm looking to train up for the board objective, and he'll probably play at centre-back ahead of Tyus Browning in the upcoming games. I'll show you him in a moment. I haven't yet called him into the uh, into the first-team squad or adult squad. He's still in the youth squad. With regard to centre-back, Jags is starting to decrease now, which is an issue. He's definitely going to get sold at the end of the season. Whether he gets replaced in the first team before the end of the season by perhaps Funes Mori remains to be seen. But that might genuinely be something I'll be looking to do towards the end of this season. Ashley Williams is still right there as my number one centre-back. But it looks like he's going to have to get moved on or just drop down the pecking order at the end of this season. And we'll look to bring in a replacement for him too. We've got a couple of youngsters like Matthew Pennington and Matty Foles, but they're just not good enough for the Premier League right now. Leighton Baines is starting to drop as well. 32 years of age now. His physical stats are being affected. Brian Oviedo is 73 rated currently. Luke Garber is the guy that I want to try and bring up as uh, Leighton Baines' replacement. I want to train him like mad and hope that uh, we can get him up to the level that Leighton Baines is at after a season, a season and a half's worth of training. He's not growing out on loan at Wigan, which sucks. But once we get him back, I'm going to train him like mad and hopefully we can get him up to the position uh, of being able to step in. Brendan Galloway, however, could maybe do that himself. He's not as good technically, as you can see there. Luke Garbutt, much better on the ball. But in the tackle, he's better and he's better physically. Well, not necessarily. He's faster. He's not necessarily better physically all round. He's got better agility. There's not much between them, actually, with regards to the other stats. I don't know what to do there at left-back, has to be said. James McCarthy is great for me. He's staying. Bezic is great for me. He's staying. Callum Connolly is out on loan and will probably get sold at the end of the season. Delefeu is staying. Kinsella is going to go back out on loan, hopefully. Uh, Aidan McGeady is dropping, so we can... I might, 
how much would it cost me to recall him? 420 grand. I don't know whether to recall a couple of these loan players that could sell for a little bit and then sell them on. You'll have to let me know your thoughts on that. I could maybe recall Aidan McGeady for 400 grand and try and sell him on for about 3 million. But the only risk there is that we recall him for 420,000 and then nobody wants to buy him. Axel Witzel's doing well. James Will Prowse is up 2 to 78. He's growing phenomenally well so far. Really looking forward to seeing how good he can get. Idrissa Garner Gay's doing well. Tom Davis is out on loan. Balassi's performing well, but not growing. Kevin Morales. With regards to the wide players, we've got no issues whatsoever. Finishing in stamina at down one for Morales. Not really too sure why, but never mind. McElhaney. <sighs> I'll probably sell him. I'll probably sell McElhaney. Connor Grant is out on loan currently. Ross Barkley feels threatened, but he shouldn't do. He's still one of my best central midfielders. Uh, out on loan again, out on loan again. Inyaki Williams is growing. Romelu Lukaku is up to 85, valued at close to 40 million. Has nine goals in 15, eight in 13 in the Premier League. Brilliant for us so far this season. Jovetic, two in 12. Not had the impact we were hoping, but... A number of those have been substitute appearances, so there is still plenty of time for Jovatic to find his way uh, into my good books. And Valencia has scored twice in five games, off the bench mainly. Uh, Calvert-Lewin, can't see how he's getting on, unfortunately. Still, changes need to be made with career mode with regards to actually being able to see what players are doing in the leagues that they're playing in when they're out on loan. So I don't know what to do with regards to the transfer window. It is going to come down to your guys' suggestions, which is why I'm doing this sort of episode earlier so I can act on those suggestions sooner when we get to the transfer window. I'll show you the youth player I'm thinking of calling up, though. It's this guy, Alfie Hill. He's currently 62 rated, has the potential to get to between 79 and 94, though. His physicals look decent already. Strength is good, jumping's good, acceleration and sprint speed are already decent. His reactions and balance could do with a little bit of improvement, and his stamina, but uh, technically he really needs some improvement, but that's what we can do in training, and one of our... Board objectives, of course, is to get a youth player, improve them by 10 overall and start them or play them in 10 games, whether they start or come on as a substitute. So Alfie Hill is looking like that's gonna he's going to be the guy. We also have uh, currently 62 rated, everybody's 60, oh no, 61 rated Bradley Johnson, Bradley Robinson, sorry. He looks decent. They both look decent, to be fair. But as you can see, Aidan Mitchell is much better technically, although curve is where Bradley Robinson excels. Both 17. Physical stats look better for Bradley Robinson, but with Aidan Mitchell being better technically and there not being much between them, although sprint speed of 66 is pretty devastating. Not sure there. I think I'm just going to monitor how they grow physically before I start to do anything training-wise. But Alfie Hill, I am training currently, and he has already gone up one rating, 262, and hopefully he will continue to grow as we push through the season. I'll actually show you the board objectives right now. We... That's the one I was on about. Grow one youth academy player by at least 10 overall points and play them in 10 matches, either starting or as a sub. We've sold 86% of the shirt sales we need to already. We're not even at January, so that's definitely going to be done by the end of the season. Financially, I think this is going to update at the end of the year, so we're all right there. Uh, domestic success, we're currently in second, looking like we're going to qualify for the uh, fourth, or for the top four, sorry. Uh, reach the semi-final of the FA Cup. We haven't started in the FA Cup yet. That starts next month. And they want us to qualify for the Europa League there as well. And we're in, on course to qualify for the Champions League, so that's fine. With regards to that financial objective, you can see here from the projection, that the projection is actually currently 40 million or so above what the club worth is. So it looks like we are actually going up projection-wise, which is good. And if we can make a little bit more money between now and the end of the season with prize money in the Capital One Cup, not Capital One Cup, the League Cup, all the sponsors seem to have gone. If we can, obviously, prize money for the Premier League at the end of the year will count towards that, and prize money for the the League Cup and the FA Cup as well will count towards our club worth. And hopefully, as players continue to grow as well, we'll be able to use that too towards our club worth. With regards, maybe going out for someone, or with regards uh, pre contracts, we could have one hundred and thirty five thousand pounds available in the wage budget. So there's plenty that we could do. On that side of things, and I will send my scouts out to look for players that have less than a year left on their contract, or six months or so left on their contract. But for now, that's going to bring today's episode to a close. Let me know all your suggestions in the comments section down below. They've not got much money to play with right now, but if we can do something in the window, I will do, and I want it to be something that you guys want. So uh, drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel too, to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. But for now, I will see you next time.